Hello, my name is Nicole, and today I would like to talk with you about love. Love is something that we talk about when we're dealing with our family, our friends, and those that uh, we consider to be very good acquaintances. But can I just tell you that love is so much more than just the human love, but there is a love that goes beyond our imagination, a love that we experience from an unseen force, if you will, one that some of us call God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Lord, and then uh, we also have many other names coming out of uh, Judaism. And this love that we receive from the Lord is something that we should appreciate but oftentimes we don't because we're too busy caught up in our worldly endeavors just imagine just think that there is a love that cannot be explained in human words i mean we come close to it we have the bible to help us but there is a love that comes from a godly being that created our skies, the air we breathe, the dirt on the ground, all of these animals, uh, insects, flowers, trees, magnificent things that we pass by every day without a thought. Someone out there beyond the skies loves us so much that he actually took the time out to use various people, places, and things to help us discover him. That's just enormous. How many people do you know would take the time out to love on you so much that irregardless of what you have said or done, they would create things for you, uh, give everything they possibly could to you, and still uh, give some more. People have a limit to their giving. You know that. People have a, a limit to how much they're going to tolerate from you too. You may say, oh, but my mom, she's just the greatest. Oh, my dad is just the greatest. The, all these people are the great. What do you think makes them the greatest? You know and I know that there has to be a God or within or around them that's working with them to cause them to treat us great because you and I both know when we get alone and by ourselves and really look at the things we have said and did throughout the day on and off we're not that lovable we're not worthy sometimes of all the wonderful things that people do for us so Anyway, we're going to get into the word today. We're going to get into what love means according to the Holy Bible. What kind of love did Jesus have for the people of his day? What kind of love do you have for yourself and for the people of today? Romans chapter 5 verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even when we were acting like fools, Christ loved us anyway. How many people are going to love you if you decided today you were going to act like a fool? A matter of fact, there will be some people saying, lock her up, lock her up, lock him up. That's how we treated Jesus many years, many, many, many years ago. So, no, that type of love is definitely a Christ love. And in order for us to even experience a little bit of that, we have to be in Christ. Okay, so John chapter 3 verse 16. This is a very popular one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We're not talking about athletes here. We're not talking about taking the scripture and conforming it in a way that glorifies idols, devils, and whatnot. That's not what this is about. But a whole lot of people, not that long ago, looked at that scripture and they associated it with everything but what it meant. God loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Now, anybody that walked this planet that believe in him should not perish. You don't have to be concerned about an eternal death. You can be happy to know that there is a life after this one. And therefore, you will receive that everlasting life. This foolishness that, you know, we associate ourselves with when it comes to sporting events, entertainment, and, and things of that sort and taking God's word and twisting it around thinking that it's all fun God doesn't like that okay we've got first John chapter 4 verses 7 through 12 beloved let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Let me stop right there. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So if you needed a clear definition of God and who he represents or what he represents, it's love. You say, well, wait a minute, but God, he kills people. And I read it in the Bible and God caused a lot of havoc and God allowed this to happen in my life. And then my friend, well, what about that situation? And on and on and on. And you call that love? Remember, humans, we have weak definitions for everything because we are weak. That's why we need God to make us strong. Love was never intended to be some weak thing. You know, some just, oh, well selfish type of uh, uh, emotion where, you know, God should have, could have, would have for me. I don't understand. Yet he wants somebody to love him. I don't think so. That is not what love is all about. You, if you have ever had a parent or know of somebody who had a parent that exhibits tough love, then you can relate to one aspect of, of love. Tough love is something where if a parent keeps warning you over and over about something and you continue to do it, tough love is kicking you out of the house and letting you go about your business. God in the Bible always gave man a chance to get his act in order before he kicked him out the house. God is giving you a chance, despite all the attitude, despite, you know, what kind of God is this and that and the other. He's given those of you out there who have that type of attitude a chance before he kicks you out the house. So despite what is going on around you, don't worry about other people. You need to be concerned about yourself. They have a relationship or lack thereof with the Lord. Let them figure out love. You need to figure out love while you can still figure out love. Find out what these scriptures are saying to you as it relates to love. Your questions can be answered when you decide to go to the scriptures yourself and answer them. Walking with the Lord is not like a fast food restaurant where you walk up to the cashier and you tell the cashier your order and then the cashier puts pushes a few buttons and gets the workers to get your order for you. If you truly want to understand or get some type of idea as to what 
God's love is really about and why certain things happen, then you have to go into the scriptures yourself. Some things man is just not going to be able to explain. Woman is not going to be able to give you the kind of answers that you seek. This business with the Lord is not a fast food restaurant. It's not a push button operation. You've got to get it for yourself. What I do is present the scriptures to those of you who are willing to listen, direct you to where you need to go, and then just go ahead and allow the Lord to work with you wherever you're at. Moving on. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. We're still in 1 John chapter 4. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Didn't say that we were going to be him. It said we're going to live through him. So in order to live through Christ, you will experience love. You will be able to get some type of clear concept as to what love means through him. Hearing is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. Just a reminder why Christ died on the cross once again. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And it's not, it's not hard to love one another if we're in Christ. But if we're not in Christ, then yes, it's going to be hard to love an enemy. It's going to be hard to love somebody who hurt you back in the day. It's going to be hard to love the person you're with now. But if you're in Christ, you can love that person. And we're not talking about the sex kind of love. We're not talking about the material wealth kind of love. And those things aren't even real love anyway. It's it's lust. It's, uh you know, um feel good types of things. True love, you all of that, true love doesn't need. True love can just sit back, look at you, and just be in love. You ever love somebody where you could just sit back and just look at them and not do one thing, but you know you love them? And that person can look at you and not do one thing, but you just know that they love you? That, to me, that's true love in and of itself, to be able to just exist, to just be. No criticism, no you shoulda, coulda, woulda, none of that. You just be, you just exist. You just have something about you that a person just knows that you're lovable. That's good love. You don't even have to do anything, touch them, anything. They just, they just know that you're just lovable. No man hath seen God at any time if we love one another. God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. So you spend a lot of time in the Lord, he's going to perfect that thing called love. And you'll have, once again, a clear understanding of what love means. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 through 19, And we have known and believeth and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. We love him because he first loved us. This is one of the basic building blocks of a relationship with the Lord when it comes to love. We love him because he first loved us. Once you really get to understand what it means to have a relationship with the Lord, you will experience his love. And then when you experience his love and know that he did all of these different things long before you got here, then you can love him just because you're like, well, I didn't walk with him. I didn't talk with him, you know, um, 10 years ago, but I just love just, I don't know. I just love him. Well, if you can have that same attitude when it comes to certain people, you can surely have that attitude when it comes to the Lord. He's given enough signs, miracles, and wonders around us. If we just open up our eyes and study long enough, we can love them. We don't have to see them. We don't have to, to physically touch them. But you can feel them, though. If you spend enough time, you will feel him. And, and some of the signs that God is around you and, and him being 
you know, about love, his makeup being about love is crying. You just cry for no apparent reason. No, just you just cry. You just feel something special coming upon you. And you know that you know that you know that it's God. That's that's his love in and of itself showing up and allowing you to just really experience his perfect love. It's an awesome feeling. And for those of you who haven't experienced that yet, I urge you to just keep keep walking with the Lord, because when you do feel it, you're going to never be the same. I promise you. And you're also going to come up higher when it comes to basic human love, because you're not going to settle for substandard love. You're going to be like, uh, uh-uh, there. you've got to give me more than just this little itty bitty, whatever it is that you're giving me, you know, whatever the world's definition of love is. Mm-mm. You're going to challenge yourself to want a better love and you're going to challenge those around you to love you in a different kind of way. And, and if they're about God's business, they're going to love you in a different kind of way. But if they're not, it's going to be a struggle dealing with you because you're you're representing Christ and the enemy does not get along with people who represent Christ. We know that to be true. And so in Ephesians chapter three, verses 17 and 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. So you love the Lord, you're going to be filled up with him. Proverbs chapter eight, verse 17. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. So you wake up early in the morning, seek the Lord, seek the Lord means you pray, seek the Lord means you look in the Bible, seek the Lord means you go into your library of books and you look for those books that represent the Lord. You're seeking the Lord. You want to know what he has to say to you today. Like the weatherman, when you're looking for uh, the weather forecast, you want to find out what your spiritual forecast is for the day. So you look for him, you'll find him. And that is a sure sign that you definitely love the Lord. When you start looking for him to say something to you, you're on your way. Okay. And one other scripture before I go, it's Psalm chapter 42, verse eight. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And then in the night, his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. So in the morning time, you're seeking him and you're showing that you love him and he's loving you in the night. You may hear uh, some of those songs. That's that's another thing. You got to be careful. Some of the music that you're listening to make sure that it's loving music, music that celebrates love, not break up love music, not not break up music, not music that um, hurts love, destroys love, is wicked about love. Not that kind of music, because when you get ready to lay down at nighttime, all that music comes back to your mind, certain songs anyway. And they're not always the positive type. So make sure you've got some positive music flowing because that will encourage love to grow. And God will operate where there's good music. That's another way that you can usher in the presence of the Lord is if you got good music playing. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to uh, me discuss love today. I hope you find some scriptures in the Bible Um, that uh, will really encourage you to keep on loving the Lord and being loved by him. Um, Go to 1 Corinthians 13, 13. That's a very popular uh, scripture about love. Also go to Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Also another great scripture that will uh, just give you some more insight as to God and what he is truly about. Thank you so much for listening.